Yo, what's up everybody? Your boy Ghetto Greg from Punching Bag Skunk Boxing Media Incorporated, which consists of punchingbagskunk.com, the website, and Punching Bag Skunk YouTube channel, and Punching Bag Skunk Boxing Fitness Academy, where you go to you get yourself in shape. Yo, we got a lot of things to cover today. Uh, we're gonna cover Demetrius Andre and all these conspiracy theories around surrounding him with this uh, mysteriously powerful boxing individual that uh, is blackballing him. We're gonna dive into all that stuff. Uh, but before we get to that, I wanna say first off, what's up to my boy, Mitch Blood Green. Boom, there it is, there it is, there you go. My boy, Mitch Blood Green, what's up, champ? I see an AC. Uh, I wanna say, tell all you guys out there, get them likes up, subscribe to the channel, and go to the my Punching Back Skunk Instagram. Uh, we gotta build that Instagram account up a little bit, so you guys get on that. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, Demetrius Andre. Let's do it then. Let's do it. Let's do it. Why are we talking like this? Why are you always talking? Why you always talking? I'm not saying what you're doing. 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 i am not saying what you are doing 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 i am not
one after another, after another, after another? Or does it make more sense to at least question our line of thinking on the subject instead of just blindly believing the accepted narrative concerning them? You know, the accepted narrative, everyone knows the accepted narrative by Demetrius Andre, uh, that he's, he pulls out of fights and that he hasn't fought anybody. Okay, right now, if you're getting ready to hear, this is a perfect example of a hating ass motherfucker right here. They ain't never put the gloves on, ain't got nothing, don't know nothing about boxing, but, but, but got a lot to say. But this, this is what I'm talking about right here. This is what I'm talking about right here. You know, guys, has there ever been a more embarrassing situation in boxing than what we're seeing recently with Demetrius Andrade? Or Andrade, however you say his name. <laughs> Um, this, this is stuff that I, I'm not, you know, I think that we need to look, look at the, uh, a bigger picture. I mean, can there be some mysterious guy, the, the, the powerful boxing guy that decided that he's going to just ruin this guy? Like, I, I'm going to make sure he's blackballed to the point where he, he's not going to, no one's going to fight him. <laughs> and it seems like, I mean, look. It's common knowledge for whatever reason. We, we can we can dive into the, the, the reasons why, but what is fact is that Canelo didn't want to unify 154 with him, and he didn't want to unify 160 with him. Okay, he chose to fight other fighters. We can all we can all go back and even Canelo's diehard fans have to realize that. Uh, they gotta admit to that. Um, we gotta ask yourself why. I mean, what why why is it that nobody fights this guy? Uh Benavides, uh, Triple G. I mean, is this all him? I mean, there's a story that goes around there saying Al Heyman is pissed off with Demetrius Sandra. For whatever reason. I don't, I don't know for whatever reason. And again, I'm just reporting. I'm just telling what I heard. Uh, they're saying that initially when he signed to fight Chalo, he pulled out of the Chalo fight. When the Chalo fans state uh, correctly, by the way, that Demetrius Andre pulled out of a fight with, with him, uh, they're actually not lying. Um, the story goes, and this is what I got, uh, that Demetrius, initially, Al Heyman wanted to make Demetrius. After Floyd, Al Heyman was looking for an heir to Floyd. And by what I understand, Demetrius was the one that was supposed to fill them shoes. It was Demetrius that was supposed to, not Chalo. Chalo was being offered up to, to Demetrius. I'm not dodging nobody. I'm not dodging anybody. You're undefeated too, right? You know. Oh, you know everything about me. Oh, I do. Yes, I do. You, you, you guys are still underneath me. Oh yeah. yeah. So. Demetrius, the Olympian, uh, uh, Al Hanger wanted to make him the star. But what happened, according to my sources, is that uh, Demetrius Andre got an offer from Rock Rock Nation, Rockefeller, uh, Jay Z stuff, and had a meeting with them. But he had a deal with Al Hanger in Showtime to fight Charlo. He got the deal, uh, offer from Rock Nation to uh, 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 sign with them. He, at the time now, you got to remember that Al Heyman wasn't the Al Heyman of today. Al Heyman, you know, was just breaking in. When he went to kind of strike a deal with Rock Nation, I guess Rock Nation pulled the pulled the deal off the table and he was stuck in limbo and has been stuck in limbo ever since. Demetrius Andre, man. You know what? Man, we tied from the sport of boxing, man. Sport of boxing don't deserve you. They don't love you. Media don't love you. Fans shit on you. Fighters shit on you. It's unfortunate. Um, you got a belt, but nobody gives a damn about that belt. He's called zero world champions. He's pulled out of multiple major fights like Jermel Charlo, Zach Parker, and his dunk fighters like Jana Beck and Idis Landy Lana. This guy even says he wants a tune-up next, even though his entire career has been tune-up. Al Heyman didn't take him back. Al Heyman kept it moving and said, all right, you don't want it? I'll make Charlo the star. Okay. And now Demetrius ended up suing Rock Nation. I don't know how much money he got from it, or I guess he got a little bit of money from it, or whatever the case, but he ended up suing Rock Nation, and he's basically been stuck in limbo ever since. 
Al Heyman wanted to sign Demetrius. He he wasn't Chalo wasn't wasn't the initial going to be the initial star that he that he built. So I mean, so is Al Heyman the is Al Heyman the one the reason why? I mean, you got to ask yourself. For someone to put a, a black a blacklist Demetrius Andre to this extent, okay, it has to be a powerful individual. I'm not saying it's Al Heyman. I, I know Al Heyman done plenty of great things for so many fighters. So this is not an anti-Al Heyman video. It's just when I got that letter, I want I wanted to at least address this conspiracy theories. There is there is people out there that believe that Al Heyman is the one behind blacklisting. Demetrius Andre, and this has to be somebody powerful because nobody will fight him. I made a video and I titled that video, Demetrius Andre is running out of time. Demetrius is 34 years old. He was just in position to become Canelo Alvarez's mandatory at 168. You know what I mean? And, 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 and I say to myself, if Eddie Hearn can't move this guy. And Eddie Hearn's on the record for saying he's the hottest fighter he's ever even worked with to move or, or arrange fights and all that stuff. So I got to figure uh, he was offered $300,000 uh, to fight um, Zach Parker. Now, that's nothing to sneeze at to the normal individual. Listen, Americans are, are studies have shown that uh, the typical American family don't e doesn't even have $5,000 in savings. So, $300,000 is a lot of money, but to a two-time uh, world boxing world champion, a $2,000, a $300,000 purse bid is not a lot of money. Not when guys are making hundreds of millions of dollars for championship fights, okay? So that, that's not a lot of money in that context. So if they if the purse bid, if they offer the Demetrius $300,000, that's not an exuberant amount of money. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? So when he turns that down, because it's, it's actually insultingly low, okay? So when he turns that down, you can't, you almost can't say, you know, dog the guy for, for turning that down. I mean, you know, he, he feels that he's worth more than that. Me, personally, I think he is. And, 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 you know what I mean? So, so, but a lot of guys say, oh, he pulled out another fight. But if there's a power behind the scenes, there's a wizard behind the curtain that's, Pulling the strings and making it hard for this guy to, I don't, I don't see where years and years and years and years of, of, of trying to land big fights could could escape him without there be some some type of behind the scenes hanky hanky going on. You know what I mean? It just sounds kind of sketchy to me. And you got the media fans that come on one end and they say, "Oh, Canelo's scared." Listen, let me just put this out there for you jackasses that say that. You don't know what you're talking about, so just shut the hell up. Nobody's afraid when you get to this level, okay? When you get to a pro, world-class level, it's not about afraid. You're going to realize, most of even me, started the Junior Olympics, 13, 14 years old, Jordan Gloves, AAUs, you grew up in the ring. It's not about fear. And when you get to a world-class level, it has nothing to do with fear. It's become strictly business. Okay? Stop with that afraid stuff. Canelo's not afraid of anybody. He's not afraid of anybody. It's just the numbers gotta line up. And, and, and behind the scenes. And, and look, it, it comes down to money. So, so all I'm saying is ask yourself. We all know Demetrius is not a dumbass. He's not a, he's not a dumb dude. So I think that through five, six, seven, eight, nine, how many long years it's been, that he would have had some success in landing big fights. I mean, there was a lot, this name's been thrown around to him forever, but he hasn't been able to, to, to nail him. This guy's 31 and 0 with 19 knockouts, a two-time world champion and an Olympian. Are you telling, an undefeated, are you telling me that that's not worthy of getting a big fight somewhere with Triple G or Benavides or Chalo or, you know, the King Canelo? <laughs> you know what I mean? I think he should have been in the ring with Canelo a long time. All right, I'm going to just throw, get the premise off everything. He, he should Canelo, you should have fought him a long time ago. All right? Point blank. You should have fought him a long time ago. Uh, if he's such an easy target, he had belts, go take the easy belt. Why, why, you know what I mean? Why you go all the way up to 168 to, to unify? Why you didn't unify at 154 or 160? You know what I mean? And again, I don't want this to morph into, 
uh, anti Canelo video. All I'm saying is these are I, I want these are the facts. I know a lot of <clears throat> the narrative out there now is he can't get a fight. He don't fight anybody. Listen, if you can't get the fight, then how can you say keep saying oh he don't fight anybody? You have to get the fight. So when people say he ain't fought anybody, if somebody's blocking you from getting the fight, I mean, I think it's accepted across the board that he's talented enough to compete on that level, to be there. I think it's, I don't think there's ever been a, 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 a question of his skill. Okay, so if he has the skill to compete on that level, then why is he not? You hear me clear enough. Why is he not competing on that level? Why? is he don't have anybody on his resume. Because you guys are always bringing up his resume. You know, there's nobody on his resume. Who's he fought since Vada Rosen, whatever. Which, by the way, I think you guys are sleeping on Vada Rosen. When he fought Vada Rosen, and I don't know if I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, champ, but you know, anyway. Uh, Vada, when he fought Vada Rosen, uh, uh, Vada Rosen was a fed fighter. Don't know, you guys are sleep. You guys are like a guy who was like a, like a bum or something. No, no, he's a good fighter. But, but I'm saying, all I'm saying, guys, is why don't we ask us, so, can't, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is say, can it be another reason? Can it be a mysterious phantom in the background? That's, I mean, <laughs> think about this though for a second. If, if that is the case, then whoever's doing that, uh, you're a jackass, okay? Because, you, because you're butthurt over whatever reason, I don't know. Look, some people are saying, and I'm just telling you what I hear, this ain't from me, this from, from a source of saying that, some people are saying that maybe Paul is actually the one who pissed off somebody. Now, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just news, baby. I'm just news. I heard that. Now, Paul, <laughs> what can I say? That's what I heard, chat. Uh, but, you know what I mean? But whatever the case is, all I'm saying is, it's got to be another reason. I, 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 listen, I've been in boxing my whole life. I've been banging my head against the wall. Bing, 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 bing. I can't figure it out. I don't understand how, I mean, uh, 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 Manduga, uh, Mangua, uh, I, I didn't be butchering his name, but you know what I'm talking about. Mangua, uh, he, he, he didn't fight him. Uh, Benavides uh, evidently got uh, all priced himself, but I heard that that wasn't right either, that it was that Benavides didn't outprice himself. It was Benavides' manager or some jackass in his camp that was uh, got an interview and said some stupid nonsense. So it wasn't, so I don't blame Benavides because I think Benavides wants to fight him. Uh, let, let's hope he does. I mean, listen, it's too, listen, I, I'm gonna tell you like this. I don't even want to see a Canelo and fight. The fight I want to see is Andre and Charlo. Or second, Andre and Benavides. He's the the fights I want to see, and I think uh, it, it, with, with that fight, the, one of them fights happening, and then maybe the winner uh, fights Canelo. Canelo, you got you say your legacy building, Canelo. Um, I think, and, and some people might argue this point, but this is my personal opinion. I think your legacy is not complete if it ends without a fight against Demetrius Andre. I think you need to fight Demetrius Andre to complete your legacy. That's a, that'll be. I think for whatever reason that'll be a stain on your legacy because you never fought him. You never shut his mouth. Can you imagine Julio Cesar Chavez having a guy around for years that been calling him bitches and all kind of stuff on, on on videos that went viral and, and all and he was a champion. You didn't fight him. Can you imagine Chavez not fighting this guy? I can't imagine that. I know Chavez would have fought Demetrius. So Chavez would have fought Demetrius a long time ago. So, you know, again, the game back then is different from the game now. You know what I mean? It's not the same game. So, with that said, we got to think in numbers now. Which which aggravates me. If you go to my channel, you know, I got plenty of videos where I tell you guys that it's not about money, but I can't seem to take you out of your programming and your 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 your, your, your program. I can't take you out. I can't break you out of the matrix. So I got to talk around the matrix. So now we got to almost accept this baloney about selling ticket sales. Do you realize that's a category now when people uh, uh, start dissecting fights and stuff? That That's a category. Does he sell tickets? And I tell people all the time, okay, that 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 there was fighters in the past that couldn't sell out their kitchen. They, could, <laughs> they couldn't sell out anything, but they still put them in the big fights. So it's not about, it's not about money and, and all that junk. I think 
I think we're moving in the wrong direction. And I and, and in Ford, I, I blame you on a lot of that. I mean, you brought in all that money, money, money stuff. I mean, you got money, 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 make it rain, all that stuff. You brought that in, Floyd. And now, you know, we got a generation of dumbass kids that think boxing is about money. And it's about a little bit more than money. You know what I mean? I'm trying to, you know, a little bit more than that. And this is the byproduct of it, where the, the, the bottom line matters more. You know what I'm saying? The bottom line matters more. And not, not who's better. It doesn't matter who's better anymore. Kids don't care about that. All they care about is who sells my tickets. It's a, it's an insult now for guys to say, oh, you, you, you don't you don't even sell any tickets. Like that's an ins and it has nothing to do with boxing. It's an insult to a fighter now to say you are not popular. You can't sell tickets. When the f whoa, almost swore. <laughs> Gotta keep clean. When did that happen? Huh? Somebody tell me when that happened. That is that it became important how popular you are. There's been popular fighters and unpopular fighters. But it ain't about popularity, it's about skill set. It's about who is the best in the ring. Who's the champion? That's what being a champion is. Champion is not the most popular guy. Champion is the baddest guy. <laughs> That's why I call it the baddest man on the planet. What the frig? I mean, come on, man. Listen, if there's a guy behind the scenes that's sabotaging Demetrius Andre's career, you are a jackass. I'm telling you, I don't care how powerful you are. We, we, we got to do it to me. my ass? I, I don't think so. You, you, you're you a jackass. I'm saying if that's the case, if I'm just paranoid and then a lot of people are paranoid or, or you know, if this is just paranoia, I, I consider myself very, very smart and intelligent. My cognitive uh, structure is very good. So I'm not a dumbass. So... But I, and I, but I and I have suspicions because I independently think I don't just believe the narrative. You can't just put something on TV, or on the news, or on TMZ, or on whatever, whatever, or some jackass YouTube channel guy who who, who thinks he knows something, uh, or or got one friend in the industry who feeds him, you know what I mean, whatever, and he gets up there and he's just sit at the authority. And I'm not dogging. I'm not trying to say any name in particular. <laughs> I nah, only kidding, Blue Blood. This is busting. <laughs> but anyway, my point is, I'm saying, you know, <laughs> you know, you, I don't believe everything I hear. Okay, I just don't believe everything I hear. I, 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 I got to think for myself. I'm not the dumbass sitting at the stoplight with no cars in sight, but the right, the light says red, and he's sitting. I seen this. I seen this happen. Got no one else. Four intersection. Four intersection. Red light. Guy sits at the light. Wait for the light. Tell him to go green. Tell him he can cross the street. No cars, nobody in sight. That's program. You can't think to yourself, I don't need to wait for the light to turn green. It's no one there. Cross the street. Jackass. That's what I'm talking about. But, but what I'm saying, I, I, we need to stop just believing what everything we hear and then parroting it. And if enough people parrot it, Parrot, 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 parrot. Now you got a bunch of jackasses saying the same narrative. Now, the person that comes to another guy, he, he's gonna hear all these people saying it. He's just a dumbass and a follower. Now he jumps on board and this becomes an avalanche. Now everybody believes the same thing. You know what I mean? Where do you think, the, where do you think fake news comes from? I don't know. Anyway, either way, uh, Dimitri Sandrade is becoming a boxing tragedy before our eyes. We have an Olympian, undefeated two-time champion that we're not getting to see uh, him, his skills shine, you know, what he can do in the ring for whatever reason. If it's him making boneheaded moves where he's not taking, I don't think it's, I, I think, I, I'm starting to think there's something going on. I, you guys, let me know in the comments. If I'm crazy, if your boy Ghetto Greg is going crazy, then let me know. But what I'm just saying, let me know in the comments, but what I'm just saying, doesn't it seem kind of shaky? Don't, don't, can we just like at least look at that and say, is it somebody stopping this guy's career somehow from the top that's never seen, that's in the background? Sound like conspiracy uh, channel now, but uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I mean, what, what else can explain it? 
This guy needs to fight somebody on the top. What is he, 35 years old? What are you gonna, some people think so, they're just waiting for him to get old. Thing is, <clears throat> Demetrius is uh, 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 35 years old, 34, 35 years old. So, some people think that they're waiting for him to get old so they can beat him and say, see, I told you so. He sucks. I knew he sucked all along. But that's a 35 year old guy. I fought for it in a wingless super middleweight title at 36, not 26. Oh, and that's a snap at you jackasses that be talking about that fight. You know, you know what fight I'm talking about. I was 36 years old, not 22, 23, 24, 25, or even 26. Anyway, man, that's my thoughts. You guys let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, uh, about this Demetrius Andre conspiracy uh, of some powerful man uh, in, in behind the scenes uh, purposely sabotaging his career. You guys let me know what you think. Peace. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.